Hello there. Today we'll be discussing about ZRAM. So what is ZRAM actually? Sometimes you might be going low on your RAM. This can often happen when you're running very heavy applications. For me, it's when I'm running VS Code and Discord and a web browser. This can get heavy on lower end devices. Even if you're on a higher end device, you probably need more RAM because you're virtualizing stuff and because who doesn't need more RAM? So what ZRAM does is that it creates a compressed RAM based block device. You do not actually get any extra RAM or extra storage. No extra storage is allocated. However, the stuff that goes into your actual RAM is compressed. So this way you can store more files on your RAM than you'd actually do. Now there are multiple ways to enable ZRAM and the methods may vary depending on what init system you're using. I am on a systemd based distro, Endeavor OS, which is itself based on Arch Linux. So you can follow this tutorial, whether you're in Arch, Endeavor, Manjaro or anything that is based on Arch, probably anything that has systemd maybe. I'll be using systemd ZRAM generator that makes it very easy to generate your ZRAM device. First thing you need to do is to install the ZRAM generator package. Now we need to place the configuration file at the right location. Let's just run a quick find command for that. Okay. All these errors can be ignored. This is the file user share doc. So I'll just copy the location. I'll copy this file to slash hc slash systemd slash zram generator.conf okay, You need sudo for that. Cool. Now you can edit this file again. You need sudo. So in here you have first the declarations of different block devices. In the example configuration there are two devices zram0 and if you scroll down you'll see zram1. Okay. This is ZRAM1. So in, in this video, I'll only create one device, although you can add as many as you want. I'll comment it out on our first ZRAM device. The first attribute is host memory limit. This is the maximum amount of RAM that your machine can have. If you set it to something like, let's say 500 megabytes, these values are in megabytes. If I can show you my current system specs, this is a virtual machine by the way. So I have about 3.83, 4 gigabytes of RAM. I'll go back to my configuration file. So if I set my maximum limit to 5000 megabytes, so even if I add more ZRAM, it will actually not be used. Next up, we have this attribute called ZRAM fraction. That is the fraction of your actual RAM that will be used as a separate ZRAM block device. So let's say I set it to the default 0.5. What that means is that out of my 3.83 gigabytes of RAM, we'll have 0.5, that will be 1.9 gigabytes approx. We'll have 3.8 plus 1.9 gigabyte of total RAM. Back to my config. So here you have this attribute max ZRAM size. So even if you increase the ZRAM fraction, it will not go beyond the maximum size. Right now we're looking at about 1.9 gigabytes of ZRAM block device. So we'll have to of course increase this. I'll set it to 2000. And the compression algorithm can be set to the default one, doesn't matter. The default one is good enough. I'll save this, exit. Now we'll create the new device units. For that run systemctl, systemctl, daemon reload. enter your password and it will reload your system deconfig so you'll have your new ZRAM devices created. Now you can start actually start using your ZRAM device. So again, systemctl start slash dev slash ZRAM0. This is the name of device that we set in our config file. If you have multiple devices, you can use the other ones too. Okay, now if we go and check our htop status, 
you can see we have 3.83 gigabytes of actual RAM and 1.9 is being used as swap. This might look as a swap device, however, it's not actually a proper traditional swap. This 1.92 gigabytes will be stored on your RAM itself. However, it will be compressed so as to accommodate the complete the all that data into a single 4 gigabytes or in my case 3.83 gigabyte, whatever is your RAM capacity. It will compress the files so that they can be accommodated, accommodated in that RAM. You can also use this utility called ZRAM CTL. This will list the ZRAM devices that you have. Using this, you can confirm whether your device was actually configured or not. You can also use the swap on command. This is also showing that our ZRAM 0 is active. 